Sean brothers and sisters. Today's Thursday thought is going to be a very controversial one within the Latter-day Saint movement and probably, well, just controversial in general. Um, it's going to be on polygamy and it's going to be a longer one. I'm going to warn you ahead of time. It's going to be longer because this is just a broad topic and I'm there's no way I can cover everything in one video, whether it be 10 minutes or half an hour. Um, at some point, I would like to make a, a longer video or series of videos talking about it, but in the meantime, I'm just going to share some thoughts with you right now. I want to start off by saying that while I, my wife and I were monogamists, but that doesn't mean that polygamists are not welcome in the fellowship. You know, we want everyone to feel welcome in the fellowship. Um, but that said, I, I would like to go over the three different types of polygamy that were taught in the early churches. And, and just kind of discuss that a little bit. Uh, because the reality is that there's only one type of polygamy that is not accepted um, here in the fellowship, and that is the sex offender type, where you marry 14-year-old girls. So let's start with that. Joseph Smith, in using today's terms, I would not call him a polygamist. I would say he was more of a polyandrous, polyamorous, because in his church, it wasn't just him. Men took multiple wives and women took multiple husbands. Um, and that actually did happen sometimes at Brigham Young Church as well, but it was very frowned upon and usually it was because they had, had gotten a divorce or left the husband behind and um, were, were planning on divorcing. Excuse me. But in, in Joseph Smith's church, Joseph and others married women, or you could say women who were already married, married Joseph and others, knowing full well that they were not going to be getting a divorce. So whether that's a group marriage or polyamory, however you want to describe it, it's not what we tr typically or traditionally think of when we say polygamy. Um, polygamy breaks down into several different terms, which I don't have written down in front of me, so I don't remember what they are. But in Brigham Young's church, they were one man takes a lot of wives, um, whereas polygamy itself can also mean one woman taking multiple husbands. And so therefore, I would say that Joseph Smith's church did teach a truer form of polygamy, uh, truer in air quotes there. But again, because of the fact that it was multiple people marrying multiple people and not just one person with a bunch of different spouses, um, which is the traditional definition of polygamy, it wasn't exactly polygamy either. Uh, it was more of a modern take on polygamy. Again, polyamory. Was it right? Was it good? Um, I, I don't know. It's not for me to say, but I will say that it was a sin to marry 14-year-old girls. Um, I believe he married two different 14-year-old girls. It may have just been one, but either way, if God told him, hey, you need to marry this girl, then he should have waited until she was of proper age. And I don't care about the excuses of, you know, well, that was the way it was back then. I, I genuinely don't care. It was still wrong. And here's why I say that. There was one time when I was working at a bookstore. It's called the Benedict Books. So obviously a Latter-day Saint based bookstore. Someone comes in, as they always do, and they, they wanted to argue religion. But this guy was different because he was very, very nice about it. And he just kept saying, well, what about, and finally when he wrapped it up, the last question he asked me was, is there anything that bothers you about your church? And I thought about it for a second and I answered him honestly. And I said, yeah, there's one thing. If our church is based on prophets and revelations, these people who can see the future, why are our parking lots always too small? And while he thought I was making fun of him, that was a genuine real question because that, you know, people brag about the fact, well, you used to, in, in that particular sect anyway, that Brigham Young made all the city streets large enough for modern traffic. Um, whether he did it because he, you know, it was a revelation from God or he did it because it just seemed like a practical thing because he wanted the city to grow to be huge, it doesn't really matter. It still showed foresight that is not seen in these buildings where they have three different congregations meeting at three different times. Now I know today I realize the reason why is it's a, it's a marketing ploy. Their church building always looks full on Sundays. 
It makes it look like it's a popular thing. Hey, all the cool kids are here. Why don't you come? Um, but back to polygamy, my issue here is that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. If he's going to receive revelation, he's going to receive it in a way that's going to teach him correct principles, not just for them, for then rather, but for the future as well. So I don't have any problem with the idea that Joseph Smith was told to marry a 14-year-old girl when she's older, but I do have a problem with the idea that he was told to marry a 14-year-old girl while she was 14. And I genuinely do not believe that that was true. Um, I, I believe that he twisted some of the things or that other people twisted some of the things that he was told. Uh, but he did marry a 14-year-old girl and, and it was wrong. So if you marry a 14-year-old girl in the fellowship, you know we don't really excommunicate people. But at the same time, that would put you under the... Um, the guidelines of a, of a sex offender. We would need, we would require you to go and, and talk to um, the police and do your due diligence of, of fixing and correcting the sin. And you'd have to abide by the policies that we have in place for registered sex offenders. Uh, well, sex offenders in general, registered or not, I should say. So that said, that was one problem I had with Joseph Smith's polygamy. The other problem is the fact that Polygamy is supposed to be something that's open with communication, with acceptance from the spouses. And he lied to Emma a lot and he broke her heart. And that was also a sin. So I believe that the Lord told Joseph Smith to do some things, but being a finite being, being a man, being human, he took the information he was given and instead of going to his wife and working together to figure out the best way to do it for his family and going to other families and figuring out the best way to do it for his church. He did it all behind everyone's back, lied about it, which again, I have a problem with. I think that if you are going to be a polygamist, uh, I, I understand that there's some situations where you may need to hide it. Um, but at the same time, if you're in Joseph Smith's position where you could have just left and gone someplace else where it was legal or so on and so forth, then, then do that. Do the right thing. Obey the laws of the land. Um, so you're not going to be able to legally marry multiple people in the United States, but you can legally live with them as long as you don't live in, I think, Utah or maybe some surrounding states. Um, so that's Joseph Smith's polygamy. I, I, I don't think that as a concept it was wrong, but I do know that the way that it was done was not healthy, not good, and 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 bad so I, I do stand against that and yes i do want to be clear that there are people in the fellowship that believe that joseph smith was not a polygamist i am not one of those people if you do not believe joseph smith is a polygamist you are welcome in you know to worship with us to be a part of the fellowship um but at the end of the day it's it's not something that we teach our revelations are very clear that joseph smith was a polygamist and that joseph smith committed sins in his in his version of polygamy um so let's go on to brigham young brigham young collected women and in the fellowship we do teach against this if you are if your family believes this we're not going to tell you you're not welcome you're obviously still welcome here um that said we do not teach that you have to have multiple wives to get to the highest degree of heaven that was what i was taught growing up in the salt lake city church I was always taught that polygamy is coming back, so ladies, get ready for it. Um, they don't teach that anymore. They've, they've ever since the same-sex marriage ruling, um, they've really just said the polygamy is a, was, was a one-time thing. So, um, but growing up there, there was a lot of misconceptions. There was this idea that um, you get to a higher degree of heaven. There was an idea that if you marry certain families, then that gets you, you know, like like if, if a if a girl marries a certain guy, like like the fourteen year old girl marrying Joseph Smith, then that's going to help the rest of her family get into heaven. Well, that's that's not true. We we do not teach that. Uh, and one of the revelations I received, it point blank says, and and I feel that Jesus was very upset about this idea. To be quite blunt, he said that his atoning sacrifice is all that's needed to get into heaven. And all the rest of the stuff is just bunk, to, to paraphrase. Um, 
the theology that we teach is that we the sealing power is real. We can get sealed to our spouses, but that doesn't get you into a higher degree of anything. Um, salvation and exaltation are like works and grace. They go hand in hand together like scissors. If you have the salvation, you have the exaltation. If you have the grace, you have the works and vice versa. So you, you just can't have one without the other. And we also teach whether this is true or not. I can't say definitively, but we teach that the degrees of glory are bodies that we receive, the types of bodies that we get, not a physical location in space-time. So all of that is not really relevant to, it does not make polygamy necessary for uh, Mormon religion, I guess. Um, what we do say is that if you feel impressed as a family to become a polygamist, and that's, you know, both spouses, then that's something between you and God. We're here for counseling if you need help, um, but we're not going to encourage people to do it. If you're having a rocky relationship in monogamy, you're probably not suited for polygamy. Um, so, you know, there, there you go. The last one is James Strang. And I like the way James Strang presented polygamy. And that was that in, in, back then, the man was the financial, you know, the guy who carried the financial burden, if you will. And so he said, if you can't financially care for your wives, you, you know, you, you shouldn't practice polygamy. I think this is very sound advice. Um, but he also had a limit. I think of like five wives, which, you know, I'm not gonna put a limit on anybody, but it makes sense to me. I, I can see, you know, five versus 50. Um, sure. Now, so, so those are the three different types of polygamy that were practiced. And there were others, don't get me wrong, but those were the three main ones that were practiced in the original church, churches, however you want to say that. Um, in the Fellowship of Christ, we teach monogamy first. It says very clearly in one of the revelations, one man and one woman in the Lord, unless you're attracted to the same sex, in which case it would be one man and one man, or one woman and one woman in the Lord. Then, once you have the perfect relationship, if the Holy Spirit tells you, hey, it's time to take on another spouse, then maybe, that still isn't a definite, that now you can start thinking about possibly doing it. But it's not a requirement. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I feel it's important for you to understand that Polygamy as a concept is not something that we should be obsessing over so much as Latter-day Saints. We don't need to be a group of conformists. We don't need to love each other in conformity. We need to learn how to love each other in diversity. If we're in a crowd and we have some monogamists and some polygamists and we have some uh, same-sex marriage people and some non-binary people who you know, are single people or what have you, the Lord loves all of us equally one group isn't better than the other. In fact, we can learn a lot from each other if we would stop fighting and start talking. Now, I mentioned that my wife and I are monogamists, and I'm going to tell you why, but I'm going to tell you why because, you know, I'm making the video, people ask this question all the time, uh, and I'm not telling you that you need, you have to be a monogamist. So, you know, I've counseled polygamists, I've counseled polygamists where it's a family with one husband with multiple wives, and I've counseled polygamists where it's one wife with multiple husbands. And I love them all. I, I think that they're beautiful, brilliant families. Um, for me and my family, we're monogamous. And from my personal perspective, this is this is me, Dave's reason why. Um, Christine can give you her own take if she feels like it. But one of the reasons why is because of time. You know, I, one of the things that we talk about with polygamy is, well, you can obviously love multiple people because if you have multiple children, you still love all your kids. And it's absolutely true. And I believe it's true of polygamy. But as a father of seven, I'm going to tell you, I don't have time. I don't have time to make every single one of my children feel like they have all of my attention. And they know it. And it hurts. And I give them time. When I need to take a break and I can't take it anymore, I spend time resting with them. When I need to go for a walk, I walk to the park with them. We go hiking, we do things as a family. 
I do things one on one with them. You know, I've got one kid that loves. He's he's seven. He's building a. I'm sorry. He's nine. He's he's creating his own video game. I'm, I played it with him. Uh, another kid, he's a little older, really into computers. I love to sing and talk to him about different operating systems and all kinds of tech stuff. Um, another one of my kids is a little philosopher. Love talking to him about philosophy and going into really deep, deep ideas. And I really love and appreciate each of them for all of their different uniqueness. Christine is my wife. I, I dedicate my time to her. I, I don't want to have someone competing for my time with her the way that my kids compete with each other for my time. And I know that sounds incredibly egotistical, but that's a guilt, it's a burden I don't want to feel. Because to be quite frank, if I have a choice between spending time with another woman and my wife, even if the other woman is my wife, I'm gonna to wanna to give it all to Christine because she is the love of my life. And I just don't feel a desire or a need to go find somebody else. Does that mean that finding somebody else is wrong? No, I'm just telling you how I feel and the relationship that I have with my wife. And I see it as a very beautiful thing, just like I see the polygamous families as being a very, very beautiful thing. It's all about love. And the more people you add to it, the more love there is, also the more complications. Um, so anybody that thinks that their problems are going to go away if they have more kids or if they have more spouses, it's just going to exasperate things. And I'm very, very happy with, with the problems that I have now, so to speak. Um, I don't want to go over, I, I have actually have a list here of, of the things. Um, but the only other one I really feel like I want to mention, and the reason why I want to mention this one is because I think it's one that other people can relate to too, that Christine and I are both introverts. Um, and speaking for myself as an introvert, I, it, just doing this stuff with the fellowship is emotionally and physically draining for me. I've gone to events and I get up and I, and I talk to a crowd of people. I share a message with them. And when I'm done, I have to rest. I have to meditate because being an introvert, it just takes so much out of me. It's hard. And the idea of becoming a polygamist and taking on whether, you know, Christine's to take on another husband or I'm going to take on another wife. I, I, as an introvert, I don't know that I could do that. <laughs> it's hard enough as it is with, with, you know, all these people. Um, so, so if, if you feel called to be a polygamist, but you're introverted or you have the same kind of concerns about time or you just don't feel like it's right for you, that's okay. You know, if you need to talk to somebody about it, give me a call. I'll be happy to chat with you. Um, but the Lord's not going to require us to do anything. He may tell us this option is available to you, but polygamy is not a commandment and it's not a requirement. Monogamy is not a commandment either. Um, the commandment is don't commit adultery. So if you do make a commitment, don't break the commitment. That's the commandment. I can go into more detail on a number of different things, but I really don't want this video to get too long. So if you have thoughts or questions, or you'd like me to make another video or other videos on this topic, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. You can leave questions in the comments. You can message me on Facebook. You can call me. You can send me an email, dfairman at cjccf.org. Um, whatever you need to do to reach out, because that's the, really the point of this stuff. It's, it's not just there for me to tell you my thoughts on things. Excuse me. It's really also a way for us to talk to each other when we're all in these different time zones. And when I make these videos and people reach out with questions or their thoughts, I, I love hearing them. So please don't hesitate to ask your questions about polygamy. Now, if you want to send me a message that says polygamy is a sin, you're going to go to hell for telling people they can do it, you know, I please don't expect a response. I, I appreciate and respect your opinion. Don't get me wrong, but I, I'm not going to fight with anybody because that's the whole problem I have with polygamy. It's not the idea that people marry other people. I, I, that's none of my business. The problem I have with polygamy is the fact that we as saints 
keep fighting over polygamy like it is our business. So my Thursday thought for you is this. How can we as Latter-day Saints put this issue behind us and stop fighting over these things? And also the other thought that I, I want to share with you is instead of trying to make what another family is doing in their lives for their happiness, your business, here's a thought. Why don't we instead look at how they love each other and see the beauty in that expression of consensual love between adults? Their brains are fully developed. Their bodies are fully developed. Are there emotions? Probably not. We're continuing to develop spiritually and emotionally our entire lives. But the love is what makes marriage a blessing, regardless of what type of marriage one has. So my thought for you today is, all, as always, love one another, love one another a little bit more. But more in particular this time, let's start fighting a lot less. That's my Thursday thought, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.